name is Davis and this is Davis Does DIY School Supplies, so let's get to it! To start off, here's a spray painted notebook for any subject. Begin by removing any stickers from the cover of the notebook, as well as the inserts, and ooh, there are coupons! Make sure to save those! Then we need to make our stencils, and for this we will be using doilies. Now you can buy doilies from many different stores, I actually got these that are meant for plating desserts. And so mine didn't have cutouts all the way to the center, but we can fix that. So if yours has a solid center like mine, you can just fold the doily in half, and in half again, and again. Now we are pretty much going to be making paper snowflakes. So just cut out little shapes from the sides of the solid part of the doily. And I actually had a lot of fun with this DIY, especially for the reveal of unfolding the snowflake doily stencil to see what it looks like. And I did this twice so I could have two reveals. It was a lot of fun. I would also recommend to do this over a sheet of paper because it makes for easy cleanup. Now we are on to spray painting. Go outdoors or to a very well ventilated area and make sure to set down paper or plastic to make sure spray paint doesn't get on surrounding surfaces. I just used some lawn bags. Then place your notebook down in the middle of whatever you placed on the ground. Now choose whatever color spray paint you would like. I started with blue and coat the whole notebook cover. Let that dry and then place your stencils wherever you prefer. I did two corners of the notebook. Then take a contrasting color. I chose white and spray paint the cover again. Now you can tape the stencils to the cover to keep them in place but I found that they would stay as long as you spray paint straight on. So don't spray paint from an angle, spray paint directly vertical to the notebook. Let that dry and there you go. Why spend extra money on a decorated backpack when you can do it yourself for cheaper? So I just got this plain black backpack from Target and we are going to make it less plain. So I got this lace-like ribbon from Michaels and I found that the 2 yards or 1.8 meters was the perfect length for the whole design. So I started off by cutting two pieces of ribbon that were the same length as the arm straps. I then placed a book in the front pocket so there was a flat surface to work with. Then I cut a piece to fit the size of the pocket. And I cut three more pieces that were the same size as the one I just cut. Now lay out your design so it's exactly how you want it. And I decided to actually layer the four pieces of trim, and I originally did five pieces but I thought it was too much. So once everything was in place, I removed the bottom three pieces so we could secure the ribbon one layer at a time. So just take some hot glue and start by gluing one edge down right on the seam of the backpack, and then glue a line for the bottom of the piece all the way across the front. Now I was not that smart and I used my hands to pat down the trim to the hot glue. Don't do this. <laughs> as you can see as I kept gluing on the layers I continued to do this. Later on I actually used the tip of a pen for the job and that is a great alternative. You won't burn your hands and each time you glue a piece make sure to glue all edges to the backpack. I then glued the bigger pieces to the arm straps and look I'm using a pen this time to pat down the lace. I learned something. And also make sure to glue these pieces to follow the wavy pattern of the seam. And there you go. Did you hear the news? This newspaper notebook is such a cool design. Begin by getting some newspapers, I got some New York Times sections here, and then look through to find sections of text to cut out. You can either really find articles that you have read and liked, or you can just randomly choose one. I hope you like the irony of me choosing the article, Why Kids Can't Write for My English Notebook. Once you have some clippings, you can then cut these into small pieces as well as trim the edges as close to the text as possible. I've then placed some of the clippings where I wanted them at the top and then moved them down so I can glue more easily. And I just used some Mod Podge and painted some right onto the notebook. And one by one, place the pieces of newspaper onto the glue smooth them out and press them down. And this process is a lot faster because we already had the pieces ready to be glued. 
and my camera actually stopped filming at this point, but once everything is glued, apply another layer of Mod Podge over everything to add more security and a nice, even finish. Then I just wrote the subject name on a label, and I tried to be fancy and do some cursive, and it kind of took a few tries <laughs> until I liked my work. Then I hot glued it to the notebook, and that's it. Need a hair touch up at school? Here's a convenient and cute holder for your bobby pins. So for this you need an empty Tic Tacs container. I was going to do something with Altoids 1, but I decided not to. Anywho, take off the label as best as you can, and for the sticky remains on the plastic, just take some alcohol on a cotton ball and it'll come right off. Then take some paint, and I took some blue and white and mix them together to make a nice light blue. Then take a pretty thin brush and start painting any pattern you would like. I started with a chevron strip, and then polka dot strip, and then alternated between those two patterns. And I switched the background because it's easier to see the pattern when the background isn't the same color as the paint. Anyways, just continue this all the way to the top or to the white of the lid. And you can really do whatever colors or patterns you would like. A while ago, I just did one that was all pink polka dots. And voila! An easy way to store your bobby pins. Plus, they will smell minty fresh. Now we have 20 more DIYs. Haha, <laughs> psych! This is the last DIY, and it is a watercolor notebook. Get a large piece of plain white paper and place it over the notebook. Use a ruler to help make a one-inch border all around the cover and then cut the paper. Then flip over the cover and fold the paper to fit the front cover. I then cut squares on the corners of the paper and use the creases as a guide. This will make folding and gluing easier later. Keep the paper folded over the edges, but we don't have to glue it down yet because we can start the painting. Brush on some water to the top center of the page. I just painted it in a blob shape. <laughs> then dip your brush into whatever color you would like and dip it into the water on the page. The color will then spread. I actually tilted the notebook so the paint would move the edges of my water blob. I then added another color and did the same thing. I also did some paint splatters by flicking my brush onto the paper. And some areas had too much water and they weren't drying, so I blotted it with a tissue. Leave it to completely dry. Then use a pencil and write your subject name. And I start with a pencil because I make a lot of mistakes, but after I went over it with black marker. And this notebook is for my psychology class. The cool kids just call it psych, so anyways. <laughs> Once you are satisfied with your page, you can hot glue the edges of the paper to the inside of the notebook cover. Also make sure to glue the front edge as well. And that's it! I hope you liked all these DIYs. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked this video because I am so excited to be starting my back to school series for 2017. And if you liked this video, make sure to give it a big ol' thumbs up. Also make sure to comment down below if you tried any of these DIYs and how they worked for you or anything else you want to talk about. And don't forget to hit that big ol' subscribe button because it's really appreciated. And I'll see you guys very, very soon, so bye!